Alright, let's do this. So, can we just put it in that thing and take it Is that all we're doing? Is that it? Hey, AJ. Don't there have to be something else on there? Yeah, like coatings? Coatings? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that thing is on there. Mm. Oh my gosh. What <laughs> do you do, guys, baby? You, you guys are doing this? Dang! Yeah, dude, we're freaking yeah. done it. Oh, that's a steady wow. Oh, uh, it's steady. It's steady. It's steady. Holy! Better than AJ's, that's all I know. ATA. Dentistry. Dentistry, son. So we can do it. Oh, brother! <laughs> this guy stinks! <laughs> oh, brother, this guy stinks! Five minutes later. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So dental school is difficult. It's tough. And this is a point that is made by people like me and all of my colleagues here on YouTube all of the time. But why exactly is dental school such a challenge? That's the question that I'm gonna be answering in this video and the solution hopefully that I'm gonna be giving to you. So if you are a pre-dental student and you have dental school in your future, this is gonna really help you, give you some things to think about. And if you're a young dental student yourself, Hopefully there are some tips and tricks in this video that will help you make dental school just a little bit easier. But why is it so difficult? I think as we go through our undergraduate experience in universities across the country, we're prepared quite well for the academic rigors and challenges of dental school. Honestly, a lot of the dental school courses that I've taken about the core sciences have felt quite similar to those courses that I took in college. Of course, they're a lot more sort of dedicated to the human body and a little bit more applied science as opposed to basic science, but the courses themselves feel quite similar. But what about dental school specifically makes it such a challenge? The answer to that question, in my opinion, is the laboratory side of things. Now lab in and of itself is going to be difficult, but I think the fact that we spend so much time in our laboratory courses is really what makes sort of the didactic side even more challenging because we have less time to study for those hard science courses. So in your time in university as a pre-dental student, you're going to take lab courses. You're gonna go into a general chemistry lab and mix some chemicals from a couple of test tubes together and you'll do some hands-on stuff. But really the laboratory stuff doesn't get major for you in your life and in your career until you get to dental school because that's when you start to learn how to actually work with your hands. And these courses, these lab courses in dental school are difficult for many reasons. They're difficult because we have to actually do these things hands-on and they're completely new to us, things that we've never done before. They're also difficult because they can be extremely tedious and time-consuming. Uh, sometimes there's no explanation to why things work or don't work. That's just all part of the process of learning dentistry. But I think the combination of having these difficult lab courses along with these difficult science courses is what makes dental school such a tough situation overall. And so now I wanna kinda of get into a couple of things that I think will help you when you start to face these challenges yourself. So how do you get better in your dental school labs? The first thing that I think you should be thinking about is getting organized. When we start out in dental school, the, the basic things we're doing, we're like waxing teeth and cutting a couple of basic preparations. And you don't have a ton of supplies to do these things. You have a few things that you have to take care of and, and keep track of, but really you don't have a whole lot. But by the time you're a D2 like I am, you have all sorts of different courses. You have pros courses, operative courses, endo courses, denture courses, and each of these lab classes have their own set of materials and instruments and all sorts of different things that we use day to day. And it's very, very overwhelming from time to time to keep track of all of these items. So let's say we go into an operative lab and we have four preps to cut on that singular lab day. The first thing that we need to do is get organized. We need to get all of our instruments out. We need to put them in an area on our desk or on our workspace that is accessible, that's organized. And we need to make sure that there's kind of little distraction or little mess on our desk. That way we can get going on the work itself and not spend all this time trying to figure out where that one hatchet is or, or where this one a capsule of amalgam is. And this can be very difficult. If you've seen some of my vlogs, and especially I think the most recent one I posted, I have video of just how messy my desk or my workspace gets because of all the different things that we're doing throughout the lab. And this is just something that 
me and all of my classmates experience every day. But try your best to get organized, try to get to lab a little bit early so that you can set everything up and so that you can basically make this process of going through your different assignments just a little bit easier. So tip number two is to trust in your repetition. This is usually the number one thing that I tell people about dental school labs. People often ask, how can I get better at these different courses? I'm having a really hard time. And the number one thing that I always say is repetition is absolutely king here. The way that we get better with a handpiece or waxing or doing really anything in a dental lab is just doing it day to day and, and, and just really spending time and putting in the hours with these things. No matter what you do in preparation for dental school with your hands and trying to get better with sort of your hand-eye coordination and, and your manual dexterity, nothing is gonna ultimately prepare you for the specific things that we do in a dental lab. Really, when you get to school, that's the time when you're gonna have to put in this time for repetition to get better. I've talked about this in past videos, but one thing that I've noticed has changed in me from my very beginning in dental school last year to now where I'm at almost halfway through my second year is I've really noticed a, a natural progression that's happened in my hand skills just from repetition. I didn't do anything differently. I haven't spent extra time on certain things. Just being in the lab almost every day and working on these things uh, repeatedly over and over again, I've just found myself getting better. And that's something that I think a lot of people, most people experience. So if you're struggling and you're early on in your lab experiences, try to spend a little bit more time in doing it. If it's if it's upper, you know, class two preparations, go in and cut a few of them on a day when no one else is. And these are the times that are really, you're really gonna find yourself improving because ultimately it's that repetition that is making those improvements for you. Now tip number three for your general school laboratory courses is to avoid unnecessary comparisons between yourself and your classmates. Everybody enters into this dentistry thing at sort of a different natural level of ability. Some people will come in and have the hardest time in the world doing the most basic things. Others will come in with beautiful work on day one. I'm one of those people who's always been sort of somewhere in the middle. And I think the difficulty for a lot of people is comparisons between themselves and those around them. I think this is especially true for the first year of dental school. In the first year of dental school, it kind of feels like everybody has sort of this, these great aspirations and, and you find a lot of comparison between people. By the second year of dental school, it feels like a lot more people are just trying to get through it and we all kind of get through it together. Uh, so you find people asking more questions and, and just trying to be like, how did you do this? Just, just give me a little bit of, of help here. So it gets a little bit more relaxed. But the unnecessary comparisons between you and your classmates, those can be really detrimental to you and ultimately they don't do anything to help you. If you're someone who struggles greatly in your classes, seeing the person two people down from you that, that posts beautiful work, it's not really gonna help you. In fact, it's just gonna make you feel inferior in some way and that's no good. And if you're better than most people at other things that could sort of build you up and give you this false idea that you're some sort of dental god and that's not a good thing either. So try not to compare yourself to people unless of course you're in a really, really bad position where you can't seem to do anything. And in this scenario, I would try to sit down with your professors and explain the, the situation and hopefully get some one-on-one -on -one help from them because that's what they're paid to do. That's what they're there to do. Uh, but other than that, don't compare yourself with people. Like I said, I'm typically a pretty average student when it comes to the lab courses. I do good work. It's not the prettiest stuff in the world. But if I was to compare myself with one of my classmates, I would be very, very disappointed daily because Brian, my classmate here, whose work, beautiful work I'm showing you, uh, the man is just, he's on another level. He is extremely elite and everything that he produces is incredibly beautiful. And my classmates and I are always blown away by how good Brian's work is. If I was to compare myself to Brian daily, I would probably drop out because I would feel so inferior to the beauty that this man is creating, but that's not necessary. I, I don't have to be as good as Brian and he is extremely humble and would never make anybody feel inferior. So these are the things that you just want to avoid, but definitely try to make your wax ups look like Brian's because that is very impressive. Now the fourth thing that I wanna talk about, I guess the fourth tip is not really one specific tip. It's more so just a general discussion of operative dentistry because that's kind of the first major challenge that you might face in dental school other than kind of waxing teeth. So my first sub bullet point of this operative discussion is a light but steady grip. 
I think what happens a lot when we hold a handpiece for the first time is one, we're not actually holding it correctly. So make sure that you are uh, holding it in the textbook fashion the way you're supposed to. But also we tend to get really nervous and we grip onto the handpiece really hard. And that can cause us to kind of have an unnecessary tremor at times because we have this continued muscle contraction in all of our fingers that's causing this tension. Uh, so, so loosen up your grip a little bit, but make sure that you're steady and firm nevertheless with that. Another thing that I encountered in talking to one of our D1s this year, he was having trouble cutting maxillary preps. And so I sat down with him and I was showing him how I did it. And something that I noticed I do is I get my burr into long axis. And once again, we're getting very specific here, but I get my burr into long axis. And that's the way that you always wanna cut your preparations. And once I'm there, I actually lock my wrist. So I make sure that my arm and my hand are one and there's no breaking of the wrist. And what this does is it allows me to have very steady, smooth movements with my entire arm, which are a little bit easier to control than like just your wrist, which can be kind of floppy and move around quite a bit. So once I'm in long axis, I lock my wrist and then all of my movements are very steady and slow and my entire arm is moving to some degree. And that's just one specific thing that I've learned that helps me. And another thing, the third bullet point of this thing that I wanted to recommend is get good with indirect vision. Indirect vision is incredibly important for a lot of different reasons. I think the, the initial attraction to indirect vision, especially by older dental professors that are teaching us these things, is that uh, sort of skeletal mus muscular problems are very major for dentists. We see a lot of dentists who are hunched over and who have spent years kind of doing this because loops weren't very prevalent and indirect vision wasn't taught as stringently. And, and so this, this indirect vision, this idea of looking at upper teeth through a mirror is very, very important. It's tough, it's not fun to learn at first and it, it takes a lot of time, but really, really challenge yourself to continue to do it and to avoid turning and looking at your, your mannequin like this. Try to sit upright, try to look through the mirror and get good at that now because in the long run, 40 years from now, your back, your neck, and all of these other parts of your body are going to thank you. Those are really the major points that I wanted to hit on in this video. Dental school labs are very tough, but you get through it as a group. I have 98 classmates, and every time we go into lab, we all navigate these challenges together. I was in Indo Lab this morning, and we were doing root canals on lateral incisors. So it's a fun experience. It's a difficult experience. There are times when it's extremely tedious and might bring a tear or two to your eyes, but there are other times when you feel like you're conquering the world and you're learning this beautiful thing that you spent years kind of dreaming about. So it's wonderful. Freaking laundry is running. Dental school lab courses are the thing that to me most differentiates dental school from medical school. If you didn't have those courses, it would be actually quite similar. And so they make it a lot more difficult in my opinion, but they are a great thing in the long run. And once again, these are the first times that you're really gonna feel like you're learning your future and your profession, which is quite a rewarding feeling. My friends, my name is Steven. I make videos on this channel all the time about my experiences in dental school. And sometimes I you know, cover topics outside of dental school. But if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more from me in the future, make sure that number one, you like the video. That helps me see how many people out there truly appreciate the content. Number two, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know where you're at. If you've had similar experiences, different experiences, I love the discussion that we're able to have down there. And number three, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. That will allow you to never miss any content that I come out with. And I promise you'll wanna see what happens in the future. I appreciate every single one of you for watching this video and all the other videos that I've put out. The channel is continuing to steadily grow, which is so exciting to me. My friends, I don't wanna take up much more of your time. As I always say, I'll see you in the next one.